Hello everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and welcome to really part 5 of my 2013 video series on using Google Drive. I know I haven't posted another video for this series in a long time. Right around the end of 2012, the beginning of 2013, I published a four part series on Google Drive. It can be found on AnsonAlex.com. I'll link this page in the description of this video here on YouTube, but you can see it had an introduction. Part two was composing Google Documents. Part three talked about sharing documents and folders. And in part three, I talked about document and folder permissions in Google Drive, but I think that is one of the more confusing aspects of using Google Drive. So this video right here is going to be an advanced overview of all the different sharing permissions you have in Google Drive in both the free version of Google Drive and Google Apps for Business, Education, or Government. Um, and then you also see that part four talked about document organization and management. So again, check out the four-part series or the first four parts of the series if you haven't yet, and let's go ahead and let's talk about some advanced permissions here in Google Drive. So I'm going to move over to my Google Drive account, and I mentioned I'm going to show you the permission options that you have with your free account and your paid Google Apps account. So we're going to start with the free account. This is a free Google Apps account. It's a free Google Drive account. So to share a file in Google Drive, all we need to do is from our homepage um, on the My Drive section, we can just go ahead and right-click on a file. So I'm going to right click on the Gmail video series list and then I'm going to go to the share option and I'm going to click the share button again. This is to share this document with other Google Drive users. So you'll notice that when we open up this sharing window we have two options that are already specified. And the first one says private and then the second one says Aaron Alexander. That's the account that I'm currently using so it obviously says that I'm the owner of this file. Now this first permission is a really, really important permission in both the paid version of Google Apps and the free version of Google Drive because it's the overall permissions that you're setting for this particular file. So if we click change on this section, we'll see the different options that we have. So by default, that document is going to be private, which means only people who are explicitly granted permission can access that file. Unless I type their name in the list that we were just looking at, the user will not be able to access the file. The anyone with a link option allows this file to be found publicly. Or not to be found publicly, but anybody can access it. So if you give them the link, they'll be able to see the file. Okay, and down here when you click on anyone with a link, if that's how you want to share this file, you get to choose at the bottom, you'll see this other option pops up and it says, okay, so anyone with the link can view this. Now, when they go and view this file, do you want them to have view permissions or do you want them to have edit permissions? You have to be really careful if you choose edit permissions here because anyone with the link, that means Joe Schmo in another country somewhere across the world could access your file if they get the link and then edit the file. Obviously, you have revision history in Google Drive, so you could revert back to older versions, but you have to be really, really careful, especially if you've got some private data or some information within that file that you don't want everyone to see. You might not want to choose anyone with a link. Now you'll notice that this says anyone with a link can access. It does, this does not mean that they'll be able to search Google or search through Google Drive's documents uh, to find this file. If you choose public on the web, people can access this file. And again, down here at the bottom, you have the option of choosing what type of access they will have. But with public on the web, people can also search in Google search and actually find this file. So that would be good if it was a publicly facing file. Maybe it was a media kit. It was a pamphlet or brochure about your organization. You want everybody to be able to see it. You don't want them to be able to edit it. So you would give them just view permissions. But if somebody searches the, your organization's name, there's a chance it pops up and somebody would be able to look at the brochure about your organization. So that might be a good example. Anyone with a link is nice for sharing uh, certain documents with people outside of your organization. So you can't share it with them explicitly. Maybe they don't have a Google account. So you just want them to be able to quickly view your proposal on something. You can make it so that anyone with a link can view the file. And if we choose that option, let's just save it. Anyone with a link can view. If I hit save, you'll notice that when we go back to my sharing list here, I have this link up here at the top. And if I copy this, that is the link that I can share with somebody. You'll also notice that I can share it automatically via Gmail, Google+, Facebook, or Twitter up here at the top. Um, and you'll notice that the permissions have changed in my list here. It now says, who has access, anyone who has the link can view it. Now at the same time, down here at the bottom, you can invite specific people 
by their name or email address, really, or you can invite specific groups. So if you have a group set up in Google Apps, say your sales team, and you want everybody in your sales team to be able to edit this file, you can go ahead and you can add them explicitly down here at the bottom. So I could go ahead and I could add my admin at ansonalex.com account. I could notify them via email that they're being shared this document, and I'm going to give that account edit permissions. So when I hit share and save, you'll notice that the admin at ansonalex.com is now added to the list, and they can edit this file. Everybody else can still view it, because I specify that anybody on the web can view it if they have the link, but when we look at our permissions in here, they're only going to be able to view it. They're not going to be able to edit it. Only Aaron Alexander, this account that I'm currently using, and the admin at AnsonAlex.com account will be able to edit this file. So those are all the sharing options you have in terms of sharing documents here in Google Drive in the free version of Google Drive. Now at the same time, before I move over to Google Apps to just show you the slight difference in sharing permissions that you've got there, I do want to mention that you can share folders in Google Drive. A lot of you already know that, and it's really the same option. So if I go ahead and I share this test folder, I'm going to go right click on it, go to share, click on share again, you'll notice I've got the same options. If I click to change the overall access people have, I can change that to public on the web or anyone with a link. Again, it's going to ask me do they want, do they need view permissions or just edit permissions. So that's all the same, but I do want you to be aware that let's say I choose that anyone on the link can view this folder and I save it. Now as soon as I move one of these documents into this test folder, it is going to inherit that permission. So the document that I move in there, say I move mail merge test into that test folder, if we go ahead and we go inside of the test folder and we look at mail merge tests and I look at the sharing permissions, you'll notice it says anyone who has the link can view. That's because we moved it into this folder. Now, if there were other permissions specified here specifically for certain people, so let's say I shared this document and gave edit permissions to four other people, even before I moved it in the folder, it would still retain those permissions as well. It's always going to retain this explicit list. But when you put it in a folder, this default permission right here is going to change to be the permission that the folder has. It's inherited. Now, I could Specifically, now that it's in the folder, I could go in here and I could go to share and click on share and I could change this. I could change this so that it is only private. And it, it will stay in that folder. And if somebody does not explicitly have access, if they're not listed in this list, they won't be able to see it. But right when I, when I first drop it in that folder, it's going to inherit the permissions of the folder. So if you want that file to have different permissions than the folder it is in, you need to manually go in and change those permissions. So I hope that clears some things up for some people out there. I know there's been a lot of questions about that. Well, when I put a, a file into a shared folder, does it inherit the permissions or keep the ones that it has? It's always going to keep that list, but this default one will change. Um, so definitely be aware of that. If you have specific people in your list of sharing settings for a particular folder, the file will inherit that list of people as well. So for example, I know this can get a bit confusing. If I go back to this test folder and I share it with another email address, let's say I share it with that admin at ansonalex.com and I give ansonalex admin at ansonalex.com edit permissions and I share that entire folder, it's telling me that um, if I skip sending an email, they'll have to sign in before they know that they've had an item shared. But I shared it with admin at ansonalex.com. That is the entire folder. Now, if I go outside of this folder and I just look at this ansonalex logo, just to show you, I'm going to go into the sharing settings, and you'll notice that admin at ansonalex.com is not included. As soon as I go and I drop it in this test folder, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the sharing settings for that logo. It looks like it might take a second. It does say it's shared. It just might not have shown up in my list quite yet. Let's go ahead and refresh the page real quick here. And we'll take a look at the sharing settings for the Anson Alex logo. And you'll see it did take a quick page refresh, but you'll now see that anyone who has the link can view it. And admin at ansonalex.com has edit permissions. So that file successfully inherited the permissions of the folder we dropped it in. Okay, so I think um, that explains most of the sharing options you've got here in Google Drive, but let's quickly shift gears and go over into a Google Apps account. So this is a paid account. The only difference is when sharing documents, if I right click on this document and I go to share and share again, same exact way of getting there, I get this list. And when I click on the default share setting to change it from private, 
you'll notice I have two more options. Instead of just public on the web, anyone with the link or private, I also have this option for anybody at ansonalex.com can find and access. So if I choose that option, anybody within my organization will be able to find this file within Google Drive and access it. And again, down here at the bottom, I can specify what type of permissions they'll have when accessing that file, whether it's just edit, commenting, or viewing permissions. And then the same goes for people at antonalex.com with the link. Basically, antonalex.com, this is making it public for people at antonalex.com. The permission that says people at antonalex.com with a link is making it so that it's anyone with the link at antonalex.com. So this is a really useful, I've seen a lot of organizations using this permission setting right here because they might not want all of their documents completely discoverable, discoverable by anybody in the organization. However, if they do need to quickly give somebody access to a document, they want to be able to just send over the link without having to go in and manually change the permissions. So if you have your default permission permissions as an organization set at people at your organization with the link can view the file, then you don't have to worry about changing sharing permissions every time you need somebody else in your organization to view a particular file. You can just send them the link and they'll be able to view it because the permission is specified that people at antonalex.com with the link can view the file. So it just makes things a little bit easier. If that person then would need to edit the file, you would have to go in and manually, manually change the permissions so that they or a group that they're in would have access to edit that file. But it definitely helps out in terms of um, not having to change permissions quite as often by doing this. People at antonalex.com or at your organization with the link. So that's really the only difference between the paid Google Apps account here in Google Drive and then the free version of Google Drive is just organizations will have these two different options here to specify um, when they are configuring their sharing settings for documents. Now also be aware that if you do use Google Apps for business, education, or government, I'm going to quickly go into my admin console by going to my email account and I'm going to click on the gear icon. I'm going to manage this domain because I want to show you that you can set the default sharing setting for all documents within your domain. So as my once my admin console loads up here, we're going to go and take a look at how we can set that default permission. Okay, so now that my Google Apps admin console has loaded up, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Google Apps icon here on the dashboard, which is going to list all the services that we use as part of our Google Apps subscription, and we're going to click on Drive because we want to specify some particular sharing settings for Google Drive. So once we click on Drive, you'll notice that our first option is our sharing settings. So I can go ahead and I can click on that, and you'll notice that first of all, you have the option of allowing people to share either outside of your organization or denying them that privilege. So you can make it so that users cannot share documents outside that organ this organization. That's good for organizations that have a lot of secure material that they don't want to be shared outside. You can just make sure that nobody's sharing it outside of your particular organization. But the one that we want to look at is down here where it says document visibility because this is where we can specify the default visibility that documents have when created within our Google Docs organization or Google Drive organization here. So by default, the permission is going to be private. So only people who are explicitly granted access will have access to that file. You could also change it so that automatically everybody within the organization with the link has access. Again, that makes it so that when you create a file, not everybody can see it right away. But if you send that link to anybody within your organization, they will be able to view that file without you having to manually change the permissions. And then if you are a completely transparent organization, everybody within your organization is allowed to see every file that you're creating, you could go ahead and you could set the default document visibility to this organization. That's great for really small ma and pa organizations that have two to five employees. Everybody kind of wears multiple hats and does everything, um, steps in and fills other people's shoes. That is a great option for those type of organizations. You can just let everybody see everything and that way you don't have to worry about manually managing those permissions. So I hope this gave everyone a better bird's eye view at how sharing settings work and permission settings work in Google Drive. If this video helped, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. Don't forget to check out the other four parts of this 2013 video series on using Google Drive. If you want to see more technology tips and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you for now. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.